Alright, so what's going on tonight is it's Thursday night and there's a drift event on Sunday and there's a few things I need to button up on the Miata before the drift event and one of them is my wideband which was a Innovate and I kept going through sensors on the Innovate and finally the uh, controller just crapped out so now I'm changing over I got a nice uh, one of the new PLX's here. Let me turn on this light. And uh, these things are cool. This thing has a touch screen on the gauge. You can actually touch the gauge to change the functions and it'll show uh, you know just your air fuel numbers or it'll show a graph or you can switch it and it'll actually control um, uh, EGT sensor so you can see your exhaust temperatures on the same gauge um, it'll also show boost if you want it to which will be good uh, to have a digital boost gauge to reference against my analog gauge to make sure that's accurate and got a new sensor here got the control and the other problem I'm having is my uh, ECU is bad my Adaptronics uh, standalone engine management is not seeing any map signal and the map signal the map sensor is built into the ECU so I contacted uh, Adaptronic and they don't have another ECU they can send me in stock so what they've done is they mailed me an ECU for a different car and I have to take it apart and take out the motherboard and switch that into my ECU so that has not arrived yet so right now I just want to get the wideband wired up and out of the way I'm gonna to have to put the car up on the lift um, because I'm gonna to have to actually change the sensor and uh, I got some wiring to do inside the car this one has a, a, a controller module that the other one didn't have so I'm gonna to have to find a, a place to mount this thing um, the other Innovate gauge just had the gauge and the controller. This PLX gauge is really slim. There's like almost nothing to it. You can see how thin the back of it is. But they make up for that by having you have to install this separate module to control it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do here is I got to get this gauge out of here. So I got this thing detached already. There's a big cluster of wires back here and everything, so I'm going to uh, detach the power wires and get them attached to the new gauge. Okay, so I got the Innovate gauge out and got the PLX gauge ready to go in. Alright, so I've got the gauge mounted in the pod now. And I got the wire run down along the side here, so this wire is going to get tucked in next to the dash and between the body and the dash and it runs down to the control module here and I've got to get power here where my thumb is and I have an adapter for that so okay here's here's the power adapter wire that they give you to tie into uh, your negative and positive 12 volt power supply this just plugs into the control module here uh, and then this has to get run to a switch power supply from the ignition which uh, I already actually have wires run for that from my old sensor so I'm just going to tie those in
sucks that we're stuck in the shop today because it's so nice outside. Just kidding, it's horrible. Wire comes through the firewall now. Just gotta, and it's right here, conveniently. So I just gotta run that right to here and just plug it in. Well, I'm gonna route it a little better before I plug it in. All right, so this is where it comes through the firewall, right up here. It's like, kind of like right up above the steering column and to the right of the steering column. And that's it right there. Plenty of slack. I'm just gonna route it over to the left a little bit over here and then have it come down on the other side of the steering column and run it right down to the box here and then I'll mount the box up under here somewhere. Okay, so I got it stashed on top of the fuse box here. All the wires are tucked away, nice and neat now. Well, semi-neat. <laughs> okay, so uh, the wide band is pretty much done. Uh, we got Al over here, showed up drinking a beer. <laughs> and I'm just gonna take you in the car and show you what this gauge looks like, because this thing is pretty cool. I haven't even started the car up yet, but the gauge has a nice, uh, a nice like matrix display on it. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. On that. All right, so now this thing is actually touchscreen. Let me turn on my light so you can see a little better. This is the first time I've seen a gauge that has touchscreen on the gauge, but if you touch this, you can change what display you're looking at. It'll have this AFR graph that just kind of like moves across the screen. That'll tell you your minimum and maximum AFRs. It'll save them. Uh, that's just your reading. It's reading lean right now because the car's not running. Uh, let's see, over here we got voltage. That'll tell you battery voltage. Um, that's sensor health. That'll tell you like how healthy your oxygen sensor is so you know if you need to replace it or not. Um, that's reaction speed, and there's one more. Okay, if you hold that down, I'm not sure what that does. It says wideband AFR. We'll find out when it's actually running. So let me start it up here. That's pretty cool. like a streaming graph. You probably can't see it on camera, but there's actually, oh yeah, you can see it if I get it close enough. There's actually a number there that you can read. Sorry about the focus. 
But this is just a really cool gauge. Okay, I gotta get this ECU out of here. And we're gonna go inside of this thing and check out the connections for the map sensor. And if the connections are good, I'm gonna change the internal map sensor on it with something I can find locally. And uh, that's just going to be a temporary fix until my new ECU comes, but I need to have this thing working for Sunday. Alright, time to open this thing up. So here's the uh, map sensor is right here, sandwiched in between these two boards. So I'm gonna have to get these apart. Okay, that's just unplugged. The first thing I want to check is the solder connections on here. It looks pretty solid. Okay, so after taking the ECU apart, I discovered that the internal map sensor is not very easily serviceable. Um, the size of the circuits on the circuit board are almost like microchip size stuff that would be really hard to solder. And the uh, the sensor itself is not something that could be locally sourced. So what I've done here is I've got uh, wiring diagrams for the ECU that tell me what every pin is. And I've got another wiring diagram here on my phone that tells me um, what the terminals on this GM map sensor are. And I've got this GM map sensor, which is a three bar map sensor, so it's good for high levels of boost. and I've got the ECU, uh, my pins are labeled here so that I can match everything up and I've got everything labeled so I got my, uh, my ground with a G, my map signal with an M and my 5 volt supply um, with a 5V so and I've got the matching thing over here so I'm going to externally wire up this GM map sensor and then I'm going to plug my laptop into the computer and calibrate it to actually work with this setup temporarily. Okay, so I got the GM 3 bar map temper sensor uh, temporarily wired in the Daptronic ECU. I just used these vampire connectors to tap into the, uh, the map signal line, a uh, 5 volt supply for the map sensor and uh, a ground for the map sensor um, into the wiring harness for the ECU. So I got my data cable hooked up and I'm going to plug in my laptop and see if we got a map signal. Okay so I got the map sensor in piggybacked in with the ECU and it was not calibrated and the voltages were off compared to what the computer was looking for. So um, I went down and saw John, the tuner, and he helped me get it calibrated. And the car is actually running properly now, for the most part. Okay, so I'm going to start this thing up so you can see um, that we now have a map signal. Before, in my other video, I showed that we had an RPM signal here that would come across this table. And there was no manifold pressure signal that would be you know going up and down on the table so I'm gonna start the car up and we should see with the new sensor we should see a uh, map axis moving and you know it should pinpoint spots on the grid ok 
Okay, there it is. It's a little slow to come up, but see that horizontal line is the map axis. This is actually map pressure down the side here. So when you rev it, you'll see like the map pressure will go up and down. And this line here that's moving right and left is just RPM. So we got our map table. Here's another, here's a 3D version of it. So basically, uh, I've got a GM map sensor piggybacked onto the Adaptronic ECU. The Adaptronic ECU has its own internal map sensor, but that is not working, and the ECU is actually kind of failing. So this is a bandage to get me through for tomorrow because there's a drift event and autocross tomorrow at Honda Fest, and I really wanted to go. So I went through all this bullshit to uh, make the <laughs> make sure that happened. So there we are. That's a wrap. Okay, we got Kyle over here, who has just swapped in a welded diff and uh, is getting ready to actually go to the same drift event. Yep. So what did you just do? You took out a limited slip differential that wasn't performing all that well? Nah, it wasn't locking up when it should. So last time I actually went into the, into the ditch over in Thompson, so I'm not trying to do that again. But, yeah, you need that predictability. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so we'll see what happens now, I don't know. You know, as far as all this dirt. Do a little quick walk around. Don't, don't get the uh, get the odometer on there. The odometer. <laughs> Make sure they know how. Make sure they know. How hey, we're filming know. over here. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's a New York car loan, yeah. How many miles we got on this thing? Oh, this thing is fresh. It's only got 357,000. Yeah, that's not accurate because it stopped uh, turning <laughs> over. So, so it's got like 400,000 on it? Give or take a couple thousand, yeah. That shifter's nice and sloppy. It's awesome. Up every time. <laughs>